Hello, this is Dr. Jerry Lloyd, and today we want to find out, or start to find out, some of the things that happened to Israel between the 483 marker year, the 69 weeks of years, and the 70th week of Daniel. There's a gap there, or almost 2,000 years, 1900 year gap. What happened to the children of Israel then? since this whole thing is talking about them. To see what we're talking about, let's do a little review in verse 24 of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 through 27, God says, 70 weeks are determined. So we begin talking about these 70 weeks of years, which are 490 years. And it's talking about two things, upon thy people and thy holy city, so the people and the place, to finish a trend of number of things that would happen during this 490 years, to finish the transgression, to make an end of sins, to make reconciliation for iniquity. That happened at the death of Christ, the reconciliation happened at the death of Christ, and to bring in everlasting righteousness and the seal of division prophecy and to anoint the most holy the most holy was anointed it was jesus being the most holy and he was anointed he is the anointed one the christ the messiah that he would be was anointed at his baptism when the holy spirit came down and anointed him and he began his public ministry and then in verse 25 he says note therefore and understand it from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build jerusalem so the beginning of these 490 years began with the decree in the book of Nehemiah because it included the building of the wall. It's the only of the decrees about the rebuild of Jerusalem and the people going back to the land that included the building of the law. Or, or the wall. And until Messiah the Prince shall be seven weeks, three score, and two weeks, 434 years, which from that time until the birth of Christ was 434 years. There was also a seven week period, a 49 years, seven weeks of, year, of sevens, 49 years, and that would begin at the baptism of Jesus and would culminate. 40, 49 years later, which was at the the destruction of Masada and in 72 AD and this destruction of Jerusalem and the temple, those were fulfilled. Now therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and build Jerusalem and to Messiah the Prince would be seven weeks, 49 years, and three score and two weeks, that would be uh, the 483 years if you add them two together, 483 years, the street should be built again in the wall, even in troublous times. And after three score and two weeks, shall Messiah be cut off. Now, that's a no-brainer. After you're born, you die, not before. But he would be cut off. He would be killed, not for himself, but for his people. But he would be killed, which was news to the Jews. They didn't think that the Messiah would ever come and die. They thought that he would just come and, and rule forever. Well, he will, but he did die. He was crucified. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah be cut off, but not for himself and the people of the prince, they shall come, that's talking about the devil, we talked about that, that shall destroy the city and the sanctuary, and to the end of the war desolations are determined, and he, the prince that should come, the devil, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. So this is the 70th week. This is yet future. So what happens between the destruction and the dispersion of the children of Israel until the 70th week of Daniel when there will be a peace treaty signed by Satan and as the beast? Well, let's see some things. Ezekiel chapter 36 verses 18 and 19, God says, Wherefore I poured my fury upon them. So this was this was a judgment because of something that happened, something that they did against the Lord, uh, them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it, and and therefore what did he do? I scattered, I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed 
through the countries according to their way, and according to their doings I judged them. Now that happened in A.D. 70 and A.D. 72. It was finally, they were all dispersed or killed. But what would happen later? Then what would happen? For I will take you from among the heathen. God said, and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land, your own land, not just a land, but is back into the land of Israel. Hmm, that sounds familiar. That happened back about the time I was born and before, actually. And then will I sprinkle clean water upon you and ye shall be clean. In other words, they eventually, after that time, they eventually would be trust Christ as Savior, trust in their Messiah for, as a payment for sin, for all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also, Second Corinthians chapter 3 talks about that, will I give you and a new spirit. Now at the rapture of the church, the spirit that is in every single believer at this time will be taken out because the believers will be taken out. And when the believers are taken out, then the spirit will no longer be on the earth until God gives it back to the Jews, 144,000 and Jews will go out and minister throughout all the world and will be very successful. The children of God then will be, be war will be brought on them from the Antichrist. And a new heart will I also give unto you, and a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away your stony heart out of your flesh, and I will give you an heart of flesh. So this is what would happen during or actually right at the end of the Gentile age after their dispersion. Now I want to see a little bit about what happens at that time in Hosea chapter 3 God says during this time what it would happen for the children of Israel shall abide many days without a king no one on the throne no ruler well when you don't have a country you don't have a ruler and without a prince, that's without a, even an heir to the throne. Well, all the, the, the genealogies were destroyed when Rome destroyed the temple in AD 70. So how could they have an heir to the throne? They wouldn't know it. Unless, perchance, his genealogy was preserved in the Bible. There is one fellow like that, and his name is Jesus, both in Matthew and and in Luke, his genealogy is preserved, both of his father and of his mother. So, but they would be many days without a prince and without a sacrifice. So the sacrifice would stop during that 2,000 years from their offense and their return to the land. And it still stopped, by the way. And without an image... They would no longer worship idols, and they don't. They haven't since they were dispersed. And without an ephod, the ephod or ephod was the priestly robes, and they don't have that because they, well, they actually have them, but they do not wear them because those priests wore the, the ephod whenever they would go into the temple to, to do their business. And, and, but after, or, or without a teraphim, teraphim were, were, uh, idols they would they would carry around with them. They were like good luck charms, but they had come to the place where they kind of worshipped them. And no more idol worship, not even of the ephod or the teraphim. Afterward, okay, after that, what would happen? Afterward shall the children of Israel return and seek the Lord their God and David their king and shall fear the Lord and his goodness in the latter days. Now we see this soon to happen. It hasn't happened yet as far as seeking God, but they have returned. We'll learn more about that next time. I want to look at how they return over in Amos. Amos, in the last two verses here, he says, I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall, listen how they come back to the land, they shall build the waste cities, 
and shall inhabit them, and they shall plant vineyards, and drink the wine thereof, and they shall make gardens, and shall eat the fruit of them. I will plant them upon their land, and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land, which I have given them, saith the Lord thy God. So we see these things have come to pass, and they have now nice houses. I was reading an article just recently how that uh, an, an immigrant into, a, a Jewish immigrant into Jerusalem, that they had to cook on their heaters, and they didn't have electricity, so no refrigeration. So they had to go shopping every day, at least in the, in her home. And uh, but now, now they have very modern conveniences and even air conditioning. You you can go to, from what I understand, I've never been to Israel, but I'd love to go. So my point is of all this is that. When we see these things begin to come to pass, according to what Jesus said in the Olivet Discourse, look up, for your redemption draweth nigh. Our redemption, the payment for our sin, well, that took place. And we have that the moment we trust Christ as Savior. But there's also another redemption called the redemption of the body. And that is when we receive our resurrected body at the rapture of the church. This is therefore the latter days. If you find this interesting, then share it with others. We will find out more about their return the next time we get together, so subscribe. So you'll make sure that you find this and see it, and then like it, so others will look at it also. This is Dr. Jerry Lloyd. Thank you very much. <laughs>